Ever wondered how to make properties in a JavaScript object truly unique, even if they share the same name? Or is there even a real way on how to make properties in a JavaScript object truly private? Well, there is a solution in JavaScript and TypeScript, and it's one of the lesser known data type, but it's truly incredible and really versatile. That's why this video will contain an in-depth explanation of when and how to use this data type including a real-world use case for symbols. Oh, and by the way, if you're new here, my name is Flo, I'm a professional software engineer, and on this channel we do everything related to the software engineering world. Generally, symbols are introduced in ES6, and they are really a primitive data type, such as a number or a string. They are immutable, which pretty much means they are always unique, and they cannot be mutated in any way. Now, the real purpose of this data type in JavaScript was really to have something unique that identifies something unique. Nowadays, the only real purpose of symbols is to not have name clashing between two properties of the same name. Enough talk, let's look at the first example of using symbols. Okay, so the first use case would be to identify two properties with the same name for the keys in an object. So how can we do that? So for instance, let's just say we have an object called persons. And this object pretty much contains two key value pairs, where the key is, for instance, flow, and the value is, for instance, one. But then we have another flow. So for instance, we could have the key flow again, and then two. I think it's pretty obvious that always the last key value pair overrides the first one in this case. That means that our flow two is always present and therefore overrides the first flow. And these symbols pretty much solve this issue here. So that pretty much means that we cannot override properties with the same name. Also, these properties that use a symbol are private in an object. I mean, not really private because they can still get accessed through something like reflection, but they are really neat when it comes to custom iterables. And I think this can be a custom video because this is a pretty advanced topic. So let's just create our first symbol. So for that, we just name our variable, for instance, one. So this will be our first flow, basically. And now we say symbol and then we use flow, for instance. Now we copy this and do the same thing with two but also use this symbol with the value flow. Now it's pretty important that flow is not a kind of key or value in this case. It is just a descriptor for whenever we want to debug symbols in the console, for instance. So that really means that this value has no specific meaning. It is only there for debugging purposes. So because one and two have kind of the same value and are kind of more or less the same thing, what will actually return if we say console log and then we say one triple equals two? Well, if we run this and inspect our browser console, we see false. And that's the unique property of the symbol data type. So it basically means that one and two, both constants have kind of a unique value and therefore they cannot get overwritten, for instance, in an object. Now we can use these symbols by just using this syntax here, and then we use two here as well. And now we have kind of two flows in one object. Obviously, they are just symbols that are assigned to a value. However, we can access these values by, for instance, just saying console log and then persons at this property and then we define our symbol which is one so if we now inspect our console again we obviously get the value one back because our one symbol is now the unique key of our one value now typescript in this case has a really unique type identifier for these constants because obviously i can now save in javascript specifically let one now, we do not really want this, right? Because symbols are unique and we don't want to override these variables that are of type symbol. Now, what we could do in TypeScript is just use this type here, unique symbol. Now, I'm not on a TypeScript project in this case. However, this type unique symbol will ensure that our symbol variable always has to be a constant. And just to demonstrate the private behavior of these symbols in objects, I will use object.keys and then persons and then json.stringify 
and here I will specify the person's object. Now with that we basically print the keys of our persons but also we print everything so basically the stringified version of our person's object. Now if we refresh our console here we see that these symbols do not even exist in our object. Alright this is pretty neat to have symbols in JavaScript and to have some kind of unique identifier for keys in our objects. But what is a real use case here? Now let's just imagine a scenario where we basically do have an application that uses a third party library and we do want to create maybe a third library of this library. So basically extending this library with our custom functionality. Now in this specific use case, you might add your own custom method name to this library, right? And obviously there is a risk whenever the library updates that your method name can get overwritten by this third party library. Now to prevent this, you can use a symbol to have a unique identifier pointing to this method. I will quickly show you what I mean here. Now let's just imagine that our library is in an object and that it contains a lot of methods and a lot of functionality. And now I want to add my custom method and my own functionality to this library. Now obviously it is not really recommended to override the functionality or add custom methods to a library. However, to demonstrate this simple data type, I will just use this specific use case here. So let's just create a symbol called const my method symbol. And then we again use symbol and we use as the value as the descriptor for debugging purposes. We specify here my method. And after that, we can use library object. Then as the key, we say my method symbol. And then we say function. And in here, we can now use our own logic and implement our behavior for this specific library here. Now, this is a pretty cool use case, I think. Now, like I said before, symbols have their use case and you should not really interfere with some third-party library. And clearly there are more hidden secrets in TypeScript and JavaScript. So feel free to check out this video here if you want to know how a template literal type can be defined in TypeScript. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day and bye bye.